Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this here is going to be another feeding video. I'm going to talk about a few more of my snakes. Uh, at the moment, I have eight snakes, but you are only going to see three in this video. You're going to see um, Lucy, my hog nose, who's enjoying her meal right now. A uh, brief clip of Rico, my Mexican tiger rat snake eating. And then we'll f uh, finish this with my bull snake, De Niro. So this here is Lucy. Uh, she's my western hog nose snake. Um, she has a very beautiful pattern, but it's just a standard hog nose pattern. Uh, ever since I got back into the snake hobby about two years ago, I'd wanted a uh, hog nose snake. And so I picked her up last March. And uh, for the most part, she's been a good eater. Uh, hog nose snakes can be a little picky during certain times of the year. And she's only gone on two hunger strikes, each of which lasted for roughly about two weeks. But that said, when she goes through a growth spurt, you can tell because whenever I hold her, she thinks I'm food, and so she tries to eat me. So whenever I notice her getting a little hungry, um, I generally start feeding her more uh, mice. In this case, this here is actually the first time I believe um, she's ever eaten a hopper mouse. But when she's going through a growth spurt and I need to handle her, I oftentimes wear gloves because she will sit there and chew on you for 10 minutes. And uh, it's not, I mean, it's not a terrible experience, but it's not a pleasant experience at the same time, uh, especially when she gets her rear fangs in you. But that said, she's a pretty good girl. Um, like I said, I got back into the snake hobby about two years ago, and uh, she's actually the second snake I got. The first was my corn snake, Frankie. And, uh, I don't know. Uh, Hognose snakes are just really cool. Like, uh, they have kind of a, uh, a goofy looking face that's absolutely adorable. And, uh, just everything about them's kind of cool. Uh, recently I've redone her vivarium. She's, uh, going to be going full bioactive. Uh, if you're not familiar with what that is, that's basically where you make an enclosure more like their natural environment. So you introduced uh, various uh, bugs and stuff that clean up after the snake whenever they use the bathroom or shed. And uh, you keep live plants in there. And I'm wondering how this is going to go since hog noses generally prefer a drier um, environment. Uh, I went first went bioactive with Frankie, my corn snake, last year. And it's been an amazing journey. Um, I, I couldn't be happier with the results, so now I'm trying to get all my snakes on there. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, planning on doing individual videos on all my snakes featuring care guides, how I got them, a little bit of their history, and just, you know, fun facts in general. So, yeah, here's Lucy, everybody. And coming up next is my Mexican tiger rat snake, Rico. I actually got him about uh, almost a month ago. I don't have that much footage of him because he tends to be, anytime I get my camera out, he likes to hide. Even if he's eating, uh, I'll try and place the rat out somewhere where he can uh, find it and it's visible on camera. And then he usually drags it back behind a vine or a rock or his log or something but I actually recently just got some good footage that uh, I need to uh, clean up but yeah he's a uh, he's definitely my most intimidating snake he's probably somewhere between seven and eight feet long and uh, he'll strike at you um, if you're not aware I think I might have touched on this in a uh, another video He's actually a rescue. I got him from a co-worker of mine's brother uh, who was unable to take care of him, so I decided, hey, yeah, I'll... Sure, I like snakes. I'll go ahead and take him. 
Right now, he is temporarily in a 55 gallon enclosure. Uh, that's way too small for him, but um, I will be upgrading as soon as I get my tax refund back and he'll have a super nice enclosure. Okay, this next snake is my little baby bull snake, De Niro. And uh, if you're not a film buff, uh, he's named after Robert De Niro, who was in the movie Raging Bull. Um, out of all my snakes, he probably has my favorite personality. Like, he is a very curious snake. He'll follow you around and he'll stay put in uh, your hand. He's very fearless and I think he's absolutely adorable. Now that said, I'm not going to say he's my favorite snake because honestly, out of all my snakes, uh, my favorite snake is whichever one I happen to be holding at that moment. Uh, they all have qualities that I absolutely adore about them and I love them all. I don't think I could give any of them up if I had to. Um, but De Niro, I got him at the All Ohio Reptile Show, which is a monthly reptile show in Hilliard, Ohio. And uh, I got him about two months back. And I had been wanting a bull snake for a while. Bull snakes, they can get up to like six to eight feet in length. And they have really cool patterns and really cool personalities. Um, and I don't know if anyone here ever watches the Snake Discovery YouTube channel, but I'm a huge fan of that channel. And she features uh, bull snakes on it all the time. And I would say her channel is the main reason I wanted to get a bull snake. And uh, so I went to this reptile expo and I was walking around and I saw they had a baby bull snake for about 40 bucks and I had to pick him up. Like, I, there was no way I was going to walk out of that reptile show without a bull snake. Uh, recently though, um, he did come down with a case of mites. I don't believe that was actually from the reptile show. I think I actually may have contracted the snake mites uh, from a uh, pet shop. And then he just unfortunately got a hold of them. Uh, I've treated it and everything seems so fi uh, fine so far. I haven't seen any more snake mites and I redid all my snake enclosures. Um, but it was a little bit of a wake up call. Like I, I did quarantine my snakes, but it was a very loose quarantine. Uh, since then, I have completely revamped my quarantine procedures. Um, every snake that comes into my house, uh, the first thing I do is I spray it with the reptile spray. Oh, let me apologize for the noise. Uh, natural chemistry reptile spray. It's supposed to kill mites and reptiles on, or kill mites on reptiles. <laughs> Don't want it to kill reptiles, that would be very bad. But it supposedly kills mites on contact. So what I do is I spray him down with that uh, and then I keep whatever snake it is that I had just gotten after I spray it down in a little shoe box for about 30 minutes or so. And then once it's 30 minutes are up, I gotta wash it off. So what I do is I get another little plastic shoe box tote. I think they're called totes. You know, the little Sterilite containers with uh, holes drilled on the side and I put a few drops of Dawn dish soap in it and I fill it up with water and I put the snake in there and I leave it in there for another 30 to 45 minutes. And uh, once that's up, they go into their quarantine enclosure, which all that is is just a uh, Sterilite shoebox tote that has holes melted in it. Uh, so for ventilation, um, I use paper towels they have a little drinking dish and I'll scatter a few things in there for cover so they feel secure. But uh, for quarantine boxes, since you're trying to observe them and you want to see if they have mites or any type of illness or whatever, the simpler the shoe box or the simpler the enclosure, the better. It's only a temporary thing and uh, I, so far I've quarantined my snakes for about 30 days at a time. Uh, I think I might bump that up to about 60 days just to be safe. Um, but then once their quarantine's up, they'll be transferred over into a much nicer, bigger enclosure that uh, will hopefully 
they'll all be set up as uh, fully bioactive. Uh, like I said, my corn snake and my king snake, they seem to do really well on bioactive. And uh, as a person who likes gardening and taking care of plants, uh, it's almost, I mean, it's exactly like you know, taking care of plants. You know, you keep it watered, and then other than uh, maybe taking out some uh, big bits of poop and waste, uh, for the most part, I let the cleanup crew, which is um, isopods and springtails, uh, they carry like 90% of the work. Um, and I'll go into a lot more detail into that in a future video. Um, De Niro, though, uh, he just started taking fuzzy mice. Um, generally speaking, I, I probably wean my snakes off pinky mice a little bit faster than I probably should, but I just feel hesitant um, leaving them on a diet of just pinky mice just because they're so small. They're like little bags of goo. They don't really have bones, so they're not getting much calcium. Uh, and nutritionally speaking, I, I just don't know how they compare to fuzzies and above. Um, that said, I've noticed for baby snakes, uh, once I move them from pinkies to fuzzies, they really start to grow a lot faster. And I think that has to do with the additional nutrient um, nutrients that you would find in them. That said, um, you know, that's, I don't really have too much evidence to back that up. All I know is uh, I, I'm just going off what I've seen with my handful of snakes. So, um, but I can't wait till De Niro gets to be, you know, six, seven, eight feet long. I think he'll be a uh, spectacular snake to use for snake shows. So, well, this here is pretty much the end of my video. Uh, I will show some of my other snakes eating. Uh, if you want more of this content, uh, be sure to like, subscribe. There's a little bell there. If you click it, you'll start getting notifications whenever I upload a video. And, uh, well, I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. Bye.